name's Glenn and welcome to this demonstration of KISS. KISS is an application for generating uh, SQL and uh, C Sharp and VB.NET for Visual Studio. If you're going to create a new solution you go um, File New Solution. To speed things up a bit I have a solution here which I've started already. Okay, an empty solution Look at the properties here, you've got the name, you can set the versioning, incremented every time you build. The data sources are set via the data sources dialog. Two data sources for a solution. You have the data model data source, which you're generating from, and the test data database, which you're um, executing SQL against the test. So we just have a look at this. Data sources uh, run from a UDL file. There's a blank UDL file supplied with the application. This can be copied and uh, renamed to suit to your purposes. Once the UDL file is in place, you can use the data link properties to set your connection and test your connection. You can also edit to view the connection string and test from the dialog. You can also test from the data sources dialog itself. Okay, so we've got our data model data source. These two checkboxes here to determine whether you're going to synchronize table selections across all ta table manifests uh, and cascade the version number throughout the project. There's our test database data source. Here we have the Visual Studio paths that relate to libraries set up in Visual Studio. You can see here you've got a library for the business logic layer, the data access layer, domain objects, the enumerations, the value obje objects, and the web service. Okay, just confirmation there that we're synchronizing the table manifests and cascading the version numbers. Take a quick look at the options here. You get a base working directory from which you um, will browse from later on in the in the application. Text editor can be set. The default will be Notepad, uh, but if you have a separate text editor, then you can edit you can edit your files using that. A comparison tool here um, we're using Beyond Compare, uh, but any comparison tool that accepts uh, two paths as its parameters should work. During concatenation, um, output files are created and you can choose the format in which the output files are saved as. Uh, line endings also can be determined for concatenation. Various options here is to um, determine when the solution is going to be synchronized. Now this synchronization here is the synchronization between the data model database and the internal data model for KISS. You can also determine whether you're going to be validating your data model on Generate to check for changes. You can also set here whether you want to see the file preview in the main screen and set the text colors, a format the text whenever a file is selected. Uh, Details here about the author, company name, and copyright. On the code tab, you can set a code editor. In this case, it's uh, Visual Studio. You can also set the namespaces for the projects that I showed you in the solution, which relate to the Visual Studio projects. On the SQL tab, you can set your SQL editor to um, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. If you have SQL Scripter, you can fire it off uh, in the, from the application. SQL Scripter is good for um, generating test data. Uh, and also, if you're interested in a uh, link to SQL, you can use uh, SQL Metal, which is uh, part of the Windows SDK. So more defaults here. The date time null value is the value that you use to determine date time nulls. Uh, the default is the min value for date time. 
We've also then got the prefixes and suffixes for your stored procedures. Uh, if you have a prefix for your tables, you can uh, opt to have that trimmed off. Param prefix, um, so if you want to have like n underscore, you could have that there. And the field prefix, says uh, that's the default currently for C Sharp uh, class members. And those are replicated for SQL because those two always have the code and the SQL prefixes and suffixes always have to match. Okay. If you need any more help, there's uh, full help available. You can see there the subjects. Right, if we go to the CRUD template wizard, this is a template-based uh, generation application. We'll select the language and the database that we're interested in. You can choose between dataset results and value object results from your um, method calls. As you see, as we switch between the two here, the template selected change. Here we have access to the templates dialog. Um, so the templates supplied will generate out of the box, but as you become more familiar with the application, you can make modifications uh, or even create your own templates. Um, let's have a look. There's a value object result manifest for C sharp. So if we modify that, you can see here that it's native C sharp apart from the placeholders where uh, blocks of code are going to be added. Placeholders can be added using the context menus. You have access also to the placeholders themselves. One in particular to note is the test database name. In this case it's AdventureWorks test database. And that's going to be substituted uh, at execution time uh, for this placeholder here. You can add your own placeholders later on uh, and use them in your SQL scripts. And again you've got access to the options here. So now if we just go next. As we saw in the options, you got the um, chance to edit your store procedure prefix and suffix. These are just copied in from the options. And if we go next, here is where we decide which tables we want to have generated uh, in this iteration. For this example, I'm only going to generate the department. Um, you can see here it's listed as having a primary key and a, an identity column. Normally in code generation you, you must have uh, at least a primary key uh, and more often than not uh, an identity column for generating unique IDs. Okay, I think we're good to go. Let me just finish that. And what's that what that's done has created a selection of table and file manifests. A table manifest determines what is going to be generated, i.e. which tables uh, and which templates are going to be used for generating the output. You can see here we've got a data access layer. It's going to be generated using these templates for this table. Okay, and in the user interface you can see exactly which tables you're generating for uh, and the fields that table contains. Down here we have um, the script which created that table which helps in uh, issue resolution as you go through your development process. Down here we have a related file manifest which is going to accept the generated code and again for the SQL scripts. So you've got two projects, the code and the SQL. Let's generate some code. Okay, so now that's refreshed. You can see here the file manifests are now populated with files. 
we generated C sharp. We've got a base class, a custom class, and a manifest class. Now the base class and the custom class uh, can be generated once, uh, and then they're not regenerated unless they're deleted. Whereas the manifest class is generated and overwritten each time you go through an iteration. Here we have the code for the data access layer. We have a look here, we've got the code for the business logic layer. And down here we've got the create, read, update, delete, store procedures that those are going to use. As I mentioned before, the test database name is substituted when the SQL is executed from within KISS. The placeholder is left in place here for uh, subsequent use whenever you're deploying your SQL script. You would substitute the database that uh, is going to be used in your actual uh, deployment. So we can test these SQL scripts right here in the user interface. You can see there the scripts executed without error. To generate more, we simply modify the table manifest and select a new table. Or you can select them all and just go for it. Okay, so we've generated some code for uh, the department in our test app here. Have a look at the code. Department select all. Declare a business layer object and some resultant value objects. Create the, the business layer object and call select all on it. That returns the value objects, assign the value objects into the data source and we'll get results. We just run that up. Department select all. Breakpoint that. And there we have it. Okay, that's a easy way to generate your data, ops, data access layer, your business logic layer, um, the value objects, domain objects, which include reference to the value objects, domain object manager for managing domain objects, web services, and table and field enumerations. Here we have a list of all the tables in the database and then for each table we have a list of all the fields. Okay, so imagine you have a, an existing database and you want to generate the uh, creation scripts for it. You want to reverse engineer an existing database. This does that very easily by script database. So we fire that up and hit refresh. It's now looking at the data model database and interrogating it to find out what objects it has on it. Okay, here we have a list of the database objects that we can script and a count of them. We do select all. Select the destination SQL project that we want to script these to and hit generate. How this differs from possibly other um, scripting tools is that uh, database objects are scripted into individual files, not one monolithic file, which makes management, especially in a team environment, a lot easier. You see there that's finished. And if we just refresh, so now we go to our SQL project. You see we have a lot more file manifests available to us. And these contain the output of the scripting process. So you can see here um, the tables file manifest. We have a list of all the table creation scripts. The store procedure file manifest. We have a list of all the store procedure scripts. And these can be executed to test right from within KISS itself. You see that all generated and executed without error. Uh, and you can check the message for each. 
obviously when you're uh, debugging and writing code there'll be a lot of uh, hand coded or, or manually written um, store procedures if there's any issues with the execution of those these will appear as red and the error message will be listed for you to investigate so imagine if you you had a you know a few hundred uh, manually written store procedures uh, especially in a team environment you really need to test that all these execute correctly when applied to the database um, KISS helps you do that uh, by quickly running through a whole list of uh, SQL scripts and the ones that fail that will be uh, identified to you by the red icon and a failure message. Okay that was a quick overview of KISS. Uh, you can see how easily it generates code uh, based on templates which can be easily modified by the user. Native um, C Sharp SQL templates, native SQL, apart from obviously the placeholders, which is substituted execution time, uh, and Visual Basic. So, again, here we've got the data access layer for Visual Basic returning value objects. Okay, thank you for watching and good luck with code generation. Thank you. Bye-bye.